Adults with ADHD suffer from it since their childhood. When I have to concentrate to do my homework, I can't do it. I'm constantly thinking about doing other things. I have attention deficit disorder with oppositional defense disorder. I began to think when he was very little that he had attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity. I told my husband and my son many times, one day this child will have to take medication. I am almost sure because I think he has a problem. He didn't look at us often, and when we tried to get his attention, we had to touch him. When we talked to him from a certain distance, he wasn't listening at all. We called him, and it was as if he didn't hear anything. He was like deaf. We told ourselves, but he's not. When getting older, adults with attention disorder frequently remain handicapped by it. They make mistakes caused by inattention, forget and lose their personal objects. They have difficulty getting to work to organize themselves and scatter their ideas and actions. They wait until the last minute. They hate paperwork and are tempted to have someone else do this kind of work. Many of them have difficulty with the notion of time. I've been lucky because more than once I could have had several accidents. When I was in school, concentration was something I kept to myself. Evidently, I didn't know that I had difficulty to concentrate. How did it show? Well, I kept looking out the window. Therefore, I didn't understand what the teacher was saying. I was late in my homework. I remember these smart girls who did well in school. They were helping me to catch up. I found it very humiliating. While I'm doing a task, I'm thinking about doing something else. During childhood, motor hyperactivity and impulsivity can be a big problem. When getting older, we'll see fidgeting become more internalized, usually characterized by restlessness. The adult, who's still hyperactive, will choose dynamic activities, like sports. He'll choose a job where he can move and talk a lot. This will allow him to finally adjust himself more easily to persistent symptoms. I consulted at 60 years old when I discovered it. I lived all my life with this problem. My grandson is quite something, but I was even worse than him. I can't tell you how many times my mother came to pick me up among stopped cars. I was still alive, and she brought me back. Cars were stopping from everywhere because I didn't stop for traffic. It never crossed my mind that there was a street. The combination of inattention, fidgeting, and impulsivity can cause accidents and can have a negative impact at school, at work, and in many aspects of social life. Adults suffering from ADHD have more car accidents, change jobs more often, have higher bankruptcy rates, and divorce more often. Everything is fast. Like my activities, I'm constantly moving during the day. It's difficult for my spouse to follow me. Having a spouse like that who has this kind of problem is not easy. ADHD can also cause a difficulty to modulate emotions. People say they're touchy, that they're hypersensitive or hyperreactive. Others say that they're impatient, for example. They overreact to what's happening. For me, waiting was, waiting was too long. Nothing was happening fast enough. When I decide something, when I decide to buy something, it's not tomorrow morning. It's three minutes ago that it has to be done. It's that simple. I will do anything. Nothing can stop me. When I decide to go somewhere, I will get there. And about waiting, I don't even want to hear about it. I fly off the handle very easily. But when I'm on medication, I do much better. I'm more tolerant. I have more patience. I'm calmer. I have better analysis skills and understand better what's going on around me. Having ADHD can enhance the risk of developing a drug addiction. We know that cocaine, nicotine, and caffeine are psychostimulants. Marijuana can have a calming effect. 
People could be tempted to use these products to relieve their symptoms. It's certainly not a treatment that we recommend. Scientific studies show that if attention deficit disorder is treated appropriately with efficient medication, the chances of developing a drug addiction are reduced. Because of ADHD symptoms and their daily impact, many people afflicted by it suffer from low self-esteem and a feeling of chronic underachievement. I felt different than the others. I felt I didn't belong in school. It began in the second or third grade when I started to be aware of it, that I had problems in school. For me, it was clear that I wasn't as smart as the other kids. I was talking and moving so much that it pushed people away. It pushed them away because it was too much or it was suffocating for people. Therefore, I couldn't have many friends. I could say that from childhood to adult life, I didn't have high self-esteem. I always brought myself down. It was never okay, never good enough. My entourage didn't know what I had. People thought I was acting like that on purpose. I wasn't doing great in school because I had trouble concentrating. I didn't have good grades. Even if I made all the efforts, it didn't work. I saw other kids getting good grades. Many who didn't have to study as much as I did, there comes a time when you bring yourself down and you lose self-confidence. It's a vicious circle. Even if you want to change, it doesn't work. It's always the same. You don't have self-confidence, and you think negative things about yourself. And yet, I know that I'm not that bad today. <laughs> then, when you know that, that it's neurological, that it's not your fault, then you tell yourself, wow, I'm not crazy after all. There are resources, things you can do. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. For a long time, medicine and psychology put the emphasis on fidgeting and impulsivity. Recently, scientists realized that the essence of ADHD is the patient's cognitive difficulties. ADHD touches approximately three boys for two girls. Girls are more often diagnosed later because boys are more disturbing and impulsive than girls.